In this series of slide decks, I'm going to talk about uh, how we decide what projects we're going to do and what alternatives we're going to use for those projects. So I kind of break this into two parts. First is, how do we identify appropriate projects? And that's what this slide deck is going to be about. And then the following slide deck after this one, so there's another series of slide decks after this one where I talk about how we pick from alternatives. So first we identify possible projects and things that are going to benefit the organization you know, overall. And then specifically once we decide on something that we can do to benefit the organization, how do we decide on a series of alternatives and how do we determine whether or not this is a project that's worthwhile? So, and that's where we do our feasibility studies, for example. So those are my two topics that I want to discuss uh, in these sets of, uh, of these sets of slides. So starting off with identifying and selecting projects, what we're doing here is trying to figure out what projects are appropriate or bring or will bring value to the organization. So as a systems analyst, a lot of times we're called upon to use our expertise and understanding of both the business and the technical uh, and our technical understanding and try to determine what makes the most sense for a project that's going to benefit the organization. You know, what, what are the possible things that we can do uh, that will benefit the organization. So in this slide deck, we're going to talk about describing uh, project identification and selecting selection process, so how we go through that process. And we'll also talk a little bit about corporate strategic planning uh, and information systems planning process. So um, one of the important concepts that I'll bring up is that, and, and that's important to keep in mind throughout, well, not only throughout your career, if you're in information systems, but also throughout this course, is that uh, projects should always support the goals of the organization it seems like sometimes we pick projects based on the newest technologies that are out there. What kind of seems the coolest thing to be doing right now, right? Everyone else is doing that. Why can't we do that? Uh, and that's not always the best way to approach these projects. Uh, it's better to approach things as, you know, what do we need that will bring a benefit to the organization, not what technologies exist that we can put into place in the organization. Um, and I work a lot in IT security field, and we see a ton of this in IT security where, you know, some new IT security tool comes out on the market, uh, you know, maybe some automated threat detection system or something, and, and people think, well, I'll just implement this because it'll make things better, but maybe we don't really need that. Maybe it's going to cause more harm than it is going to be uh, good. And I usually skip over the, uh, the examples from your book. In your book, they have, so I, I, these slides are developed for modern systems analysis and design by uh, Valachik and, uh, and George. And um, at the end of some of these chapters in the book, they have a, an example of an electronic commerce system or just a, an example of a, um, of a system in, in, as like a running case study. A lot of times I skip over those when I talk about the content of the book, but, uh, but in this case, I think it's important to mention, at least mention some of the different types of electronic commerce or e-commerce and discuss that. It seems like most systems today are developed for online usage, so it's good to have some literacy with that. So in this phase, we're solidly in the planning stage here. So in my previous slide decks, you know, my first slide deck for this, for this topic, for systems analysis and design, I talk about the, uh, the whole process, right? The whole SDLC. Uh, and I introduce these five phases of the software development life cycle, uh, at least the common implementations of the SDLC. And the first one was planning. And then, you know, I kind of switched gears a little bit because after we talked about planning, uh, you know, then I switched gears. I talked about where we can get software with the sources of software. And then I talked about project management topics, right? So we talked about, you know, some of the tools and techniques for managing projects and a little bit about the discipline of project management. And then I talked about how there's a little bit of overflow between project management and planning in the SDLC. So the planning phase of the SDLC overflows with the plan with, uh, uh, with the project management that we talked about. And then a lot of the SDLC... That, uh, that we talk about, a lot of the phases of the SDLC then fit into a little bit in the planning in project management and mostly into execution. Um, and then, of course, you know, we use our project management to close out the project. So, um, so we're solidly in the planning phase now. We're, we, we've done, you know, at this point in a project when we're, we're looking at identifying and selecting systems development, this is something that we do in the planning phase of the SDLC, but it's also something that applies. So this is where that overlap is with project management. So let's get started and let's talk about this. So first, um, identifying and selecting uh, development projects. So uh, first we want to identify potential development projects. Um, this could be identification that comes from a stakeholder group. In other words, a uh, group of users or a group of, of people in the business that know what their needs are and they come to 
the IS department and say, look, we need a way to do X, Y, Z. So that's certainly one way that we might uh, uh, get these projects. Now, there's a couple different approaches to um, to how we get these projects. One is called the top-down approach. Uh, and this is where management is, or a steering committee, um, is basically driving the decision to look into doing a project. So this is when management, management is the stakeholder saying, hey, we really need a system that's going to do X or Y, or we need to replace system X or Y. Uh, so that is a top-down approach. So it's management basically dictating to us that we need something to replace our current system, or we need something to augment our current business process, uh, or to facilitate some new business unit, or something along those lines. So that's a top-down approach. And the second approach is a bottom-up approach, and this is where our our groups or business units or, or managers that are within those business units, they're coming up from, from below and saying, hey, management, we need this tool or we need this functionality or here's something we're trying to do and it would be advantageous for us to have some solution to do this. Uh, so that would be the bottom-up approach. So some organizations are much more top-down driven where the decision is coming from the top going down and some organizations are more bottom-up where you know these these ideas are bubbling up from below, and then and then it's approached. You know, approaches management saying, "Hey, you know, it'd be really useful if we if we could do X Y Z." In my experience, we see both, right? So most organizations we see both. So the other thing I should mention is that in in many organizations, the top down usually happens for really large, overarching projects, where smaller projects sometimes bubble up from the bottom with the bottom up approach. So for example, I work a lot with hospitals and. If a hospital uh, department, say, let's say a local, a small, you know, a hospital department, let's say the radiology department says, you know, we need an archive to store our medical images. That might be a bottom up where the radiologist or the doctors in the radiology department are, are asking for some functionality that will make their job easier, right? Or it will, will facilitate the delivery of service by their business unit. So that's some bottom up that might happen. But then I might also see in a hospital where the management team says, you know, we've got this, this electronic medical record system or hospital information system that runs the entire uh, enterprise. We want to replace it. You know, maybe we don't like our current vendor. They're charging us too much money or they don't have enough functionality or whatever it is. They don't like the maintenance agreement or, you know, something about that company makes them want to replace it. That might be a top-down initiation where – Management is saying, look, we're changing the entire hospital information system. So that's a much more broad project. It's a much larger project, and it's overarching. It covers the entire organization. So again, we'll see a lot uh, in both directions with, uh, with a lot of organizations. All right, so, um, so the, the, uh, the process of identifying and selecting uh, could come from top management, a steering committee, the functional areas, uh, as well as development groups that identify ways that they can do um, do things within the organization a little bit more efficiently. So again, you have multiple ways that we could identify in these projects. So second, I'm sorry, let me go back to the other slide. So two, we're going to classify and rank our projects. So first we identify our project, then we're going to classify and rank. Uh, so we're going to use a value chain analysis or other evaluation criteria. So a value chain analysis is analyzing an organization's activities to determine where value is added to products and or services and the costs incurred for doing so. Uh, so usually it incorporates a comparison with the activities, the added value, the costs of other organizations for the proposed, uh, for the purpose of making improvements, etc. So really what we're looking here with a value chain analysis, we're making sure that projects are being selected based on the value they're bringing to the organization. So one thing we want to ask ourselves when we're looking at projects that are being brought to the table for an organization is, is this appropriate to the organization? What is the value? What was the decision? You know, what, what supported the decision for, uh, for bringing about this project, um, for, for initiating this project? There has to be some business case. There has to be some reason that we are proposing to make a change or to do this project or to develop some solution. If that doesn't exist or it's not adequate, then that's certainly a concern that we would want to bring up. Uh, so, so that's the first thing. So, so we're going to classify and rank, and we're going to use a value chain analysis to see which projects are going to bring value to the organization. So if you take a look at this example here, 
Uh, this is an example of a value chain. If you take a management information systems course, you probably learn a lot about the value chain. We start with transforming raw materials into products, and then we store and distribute those products. We market them, we, and then we uh, try to sell them, and we support them eventually. So that's the value chain. Um, so we're looking at that value chain and trying to determine from the value chain how we're going to bring value with this particular pro uh, project or, or what part of that value chain are we using uh, or are we um, uh, improving in, uh, with this project. All right, the third step. So after we, uh, after we rank all these different projects to see which one is appropriate to do, uh, when it makes it through that stage, then we get to the selecting IS development project stage. Uh, so based on various factors, we're going to look at both long and short term uh, projects. Uh, we're going to look at what's most likely to achieve business objectives. So again, we're looking at those business objectives, making sure that they're in line with the mission of the of the business, or at least are directly supporting, you know, things that are most directly supporting the business's objectives are probably the better projects to be selecting. Uh, and, and, uh, and again, this is an ongoing activity. So here you can see that uh, this is a picture from uh, Valachik's uh, Modern Systems Analysis and Design, which uh, shows some of the inputs uh, for project selection decision. So we're looking at these different criteria. So we could use a weighting system, right? So we, we use some kind of a weighting system to determine which is uh, the project that's most appropriate to be doing, and we might use different weights for different criteria. Um, so, you know, in the whatever objective or whatever alternative has the highest score in our weighting system for selecting a project is the one that's going to be selected. So you can see here we have alternative A, B, and C, and we have a rating on each one of these criteria, and then we add it all up. So it looks to me like the project that's going to be selected here is going to be alternative C which has a much higher rating than the other projects. Uh, and again, that's based on uh, weighting the, you know, weighting each one of these. So that's the rating that you see there. The rating uh, that you see in each one of under alternative A, B, and C is the weight that we're assigning to each one of these. And the score in this case, the score is between one and a hundred, right? Between zero and a hundred. So for example, um, real time data entry, uh, alternative A is 90%. Alternative B is 90%, alternative C is 90%, so they're all roughly equivalent there. Uh, but as far as automatic reorder, it looks like alternative B and C have that um, pretty well covered, but alternative A doesn't really seem to do that, right? And likewise, real-time real uh, data query, alternative A doesn't really cover that very well, but alternative B and C seem to, to cover that um, um, pretty adequately. Now, one thing you'd want to look at if you were trying to um, if you were auditing the selection of, pro of, of, of uh, projects, if you're looking at a weighting scale like this, you'd want to see what is backing up this, uh, you know, what is supporting this determination. Why was 18% chosen for automatic reorder on alternative A versus 90% on alternative C? What were they objectively comparing? How are they objectively comparing those two options to come up with that weighting? Um, so that would be an important place that you could look if you're trying to determine if the appropriate project was indeed selected. So some of the deliverables and outcomes. So the primary deliverable from the first part of the planning phase is going to be a schedule of specific IS development projects. And the outcome of the next part of the planning phase, project initiation planning, is the assurance that careful consideration was given to project selection and each project can help the organization reach its goals. So again, our deliverable here is a business case that supports our decision, a business case that should be supporting the decision that was made. Uh, so if we're looking at a schedule of projects from which, um, uh, which we're, we're initiating, we should be able to see some evidence that the correct project was chosen, that the project was chosen for a reason, not because somebody's uncle owns the company that's going to make the software, right? Um, there should be some, uh, you know, and the reason can't be because this is cool technology that we want to try to implement. We have to build a real case and have a real need for this project. We can't just do things because we want to, right? Uh, although I should say that some uh, organizations and some, uh, you know, I, I've worked with companies that are research-oriented companies where we'll, we'll embark on projects not knowing if there's going to be a benefit because we're just doing research uh, and development and so forth. So uh, it doesn't necessarily always have to be the case, but again, that's, you know, you would look at the type of organization you're in to see what type of uh, objective analysis would be appropriate for them. 
So an incremental commitment is a strategy in systems analysis and design in which the project is reviewed after each phase and continuation of the project is re-justified. In other words, we pause periodically as we go through the project to reevaluate should we continue on this project path. Uh, and this, this happens all the time, right? So I'll give you an example. If you're, uh, you know, think about a project you're working on, uh, you know, at home or something. Um, let me think of a good one here. Let's say you're, uh, you're trying to fix your car, right? So, you know, let's say you uh, have a part that goes bad in your car and you figure you can replace it for pretty cheap. So you go with alternative A, which is doing the job yourself. You're, um, you know, working away trying to replace this part. And every time you get, you know, a little bit further, uh, you know, something else goes wrong. You don't have the right tool. You don't have the right, you don't know how to do something. Uh, you break something else while you're trying to fix it, right? And before you know it, you find yourself spending more money than if you had just gone to the shop to get it fixed. But the thing is, now you feel like you're committed, right? Now you spent more money than you would have otherwise, but now you're committed to the project. You're like, well, I got to get it done now, right? But sometimes we have to stop and ask ourselves, you know, maybe maybe I've gone too far, right? Maybe it, maybe it would make sense for me to call a professional, right? Just like with your plumbing in your house, right? You might have a pipe break in your house. And you think, you know what? I can fix this myself. But then, you know, one thing leads to another. And at the end of the day, you have to just give up at some point and call a professional because you simply can't get it done. So we're going to do the same thing. And we have to make sure that the same type of process happens when we're doing our projects in information systems. And we have to make sure that we see these stop points, right? If we're looking at and evaluating whether or not uh, projects are, are being managed, uh, you know, adequately, we want to make sure that there's some process that, you know, some objective process that looks at these stop points and says, do we continue? Is there a go or a no-go? And how is that go or no-go decision being made? Or are there projects that have been going on and on and on that should have had this break point and they never had that break point? So that's something certainly that we could look for. All right, so I'll continue with the next part in uh, part B of this slide deck.